Hello, everyone. Good afternoon on this. Is it still rainy? I can't see, but it probably is gray at least. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm Joanne Heiler, founding director of the Broad Museum, and I'm very pleased to welcome you to today's Unprivate Collection Conversation. Our long-standing Unprivate Collection series of talks began over a decade ago before the museum opened its doors to build excitement about the artists in the Broad Collection and for our audience to get to know the stories behind the artworks in our galleries. And it was so popular, we've kept it going for 10 years and, then, and counting. Um, and speaking of uh, popularity, um, I'm so proud to share that since the Broad opened in 2015, uh, we've welcomed over five and a half million visitors to the museum, uh, which is right in keeping with our mission to reach as large and as broad an, uh, an audience as possible. Um, today, we will be hearing from two artists who are new to the Broad Collection, Patrick Martinez and Sarah Gomez. They'll be speaking with author Linnell George about how the visual language of Los Angeles informs and influences their creative practices, as well as that of Linnell, who has written extensively on the visual experience of LA. Our collection's artworks by Patrick and Sayer are on view in the Broad's exhibition, Desire, Knowledge, and Hope with Smog, or we call it internally Smog for short, which is on view downstairs in the first floor galleries through Sunday, April 7th. You'll see in that exhibition and you'll hear in today's conversation how Los Angeles's complex urban environment has been treated as important material for artists across generations. Smog includes artworks spanning many decades and those artworks contain fragments, attitudes, everyday experiences that reflect on our collective present moment and invoke alternative histories. In Patrick's and Sarah's works in particular, uh, an acute honesty around LA as both an imagined space and as a lived reality has been one reason why their work felt important to us to add to this collection. A note for everyone here, your tickets will get you into that very show, uh, as well, of course, as the Broad's third floor collection galleries today, if you haven't already visited. Um, and before I welcome Erica Wall and our speakers, I want to thank the Broad's leading partner, East West Bank, for their generous and ongoing support of our rich slate of public programs. Now I'm pleased to welcome Erica Wall, director of the Lunder Institute for American Art at Colby College in Maine. The Lunder Institute partnered with the Broad to, uh, to produce today's program. And this is just one installment of their national program, uh, the Lunder At, which began at the de Young Museum in San Francisco just a few weeks ago and will continue at Crystal Bridges in Arkansas next, along with an impressive grouping of museums throughout the country. So with that, please join me in welcoming Erica Wall. Thank you so much, Joanne. It is a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited to welcome you, but also to express my gratitude for all of you uh, sharing your time with us today. Um, as Joanne said, that this is the second of six installments of the launch of Lunder Institute at. The Lunder Institute for American Art is, for all intents and purposes, a think tank associated with the Colby College Museum of Art um, and Colby College in Waterville, Maine. Um, it serves as a think tank, but also as a compass. And when we say compass, it's not about sending a direction toward one North Star, but multiple directions that have yet to be explored. And the work that we do helps to sustain that exploration, but also it is about supporting the work of the practitioners within the field of art and specifically American art. To ask the question, as we did of all six institutions, including the Broad, what is the state of American art, was to ask the question, what is the state of America? Regionally, nationally, and globally, and its art, 
as well as how it is reflected in our discourse, our research, our scholarship, and our art production. And as we know, art institutions play a critical role in that ongoing exploration and the work that we do with and for the public. So Lender Institute at was basically created to be a vehicle for institutions to be in conversation with one another. And in doing that, it is my pleasure to be here with you, but more importantly, to thank the Broad Museum for being in conversation and in partnership with the Lender Institute for American Art. I want to specifically thank Joanne Heiler for uh, being part of this, as well as the amazing staff led by Ed Petuto and for collaborating, designing, and implementing what I know is going to be an amazing program today. I also want to express my sincerest and deepest uh, thanks and gratitude to Peter and Paula Lender and the Lender Foundation for making the Lender Institute for American Art possible and for the many ways in which this unique platform helps to build communities and benefit not just those at Colby College as we see today, but those outside and beyond its boundaries and how we experience American art through and beyond our boundaries throughout the country. And so with that, I want to ask you to join me to welcome our panel and participants today and enjoy this program. Thank you. Some very, very hearty people out here from the rain. Congratulations for making it across the prairie. <laughs> um, I'm so excited to be here um, this afternoon and to be in conversation with these two who I feel like I've met already, you know, mm. before. Um, and we're just going to jump in. And I wanted to start um, reading a part of a poem from um, Wanda Coleman, who is considered the unofficial poet laureate of Los Angeles, because it kind of will set, I think, the tone for what we're gonna talk, to, talk about today, about Los Angeles um, in love and struggle. <laughs> um, it's called Prisoners of Los Angeles. So this is it, I say, to the enigma in the mirror. This is your lot assignment, relegation. This is your city. I find my way <clears throat> to the picture window. My eyes capture the purple reach of Hollywood's hills, the gold eye of the sun mounting the east, the gray anguished arms of Avenue. I will never leave here. Um, I love those words because it really does speak to this commitment that we have mm -hmm. as people who are trying to grasp the narrative of Los Angeles, which I do believe is so elusive. And once you commit to Los Angeles, it takes you on a ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? um, so I first wanna, I wanna kind of um, start with a couple of context questions um, so we can kind of place ourselves in a map. I'm gonna start with Patrick. Um, what part of LA do you hail from, and what part of LA are you most pulled toward? Um, I, I, I was born in Pasadena, California. I uh, kind of grew up in, well, grew up in Pasadena and San Gabriel Valley area, Montebello, things like that. The place that pulls me is the east side of mm -hmm. Los Angeles, yeah, okay. for sure. Sarah, I know you chose to come here. <laughs> what pulled you here, and when did you arrive, and what were your first impressions? Uh, well, I came in uh, 2006 to study at CalArts, mm -hmm. and um, my first impressions, it was just... I just didn't understand. It just didn't make sense to me, I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, I mean, the city um, has a big life outside of itself in a way, mm -hmm. you know, so you have a lot of preconceived ideas about it. And 
it just looks a lot different than you expect. I think that was the first thing I think that really stood out to me. Yeah. Um, everybody says it's spread out, and it is, and, but it doesn't really make sense until you're really trying to navigate the city, which yeah. we talked a little bit about right. yesterday, but it was pre-smartphone, uh, so it was all with like a Thomas guide, <laughs> which is interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's... Um, when you said this, like, it doesn't make sense, um, I've written about this, it's like, I tell people, sometimes LA doesn't make sense when you talk about it out loud. Like oh. this, I feel like it's this internal thing that we begin sure. to learn yeah. by maps and yeah. by listening to people who give us directions, places, and we, we start to kind of figure out parts of it, pieces of it. There are many Los Angeleses within Los Angeles, and that's the other complicated piece of it. So when you're talking about LA to someone who lives in a different part of LA, even the language is different. The, their understanding of it is different. What I love about both of your work is that it clearly you, you're driven to look beyond these cliches and assumptions and these kind of quick definitions of LA. Um, Sarah, in your work, I, as we talked a little bit yesterday, there's this, you, you really capture this beauty juxtaposed against devastation, dystopia. Like it's holding these two ideas in our heads, you know, about like what it is to be here. Um, what led you down that path? And um, of seeing those two things at once, I just, that image, <laughs> perfect. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, um, for a long time, um, I think as an artist, you sort of like, are thinking uh, about how to make work or how to articulate your ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a process. And I think uh, for me, it was kind of like, <clears throat> I was always trying to sort of take what I was seeing and take what I was experiencing in my surroundings and uh, figure out how to like turn that into art, mm -hmm. you know, through some kind of, you know, process. Uh, yeah, and then I realized, you know, I didn't really need to do as much. I could right. just sort of, it was like kind of like, oh, if I just take that and that, that's, that's kind of what it, it is. That's kind right. of what it's like to be here. Yeah. So um, I think it's just like a long kind of, almost like a process of elimination of just sort of like, you know, figuring out my own sort of ideas mm -hmm. about how I saw the city and then figuring out the best ways to articulate it. Yeah. Yeah. Patrick, I, I'm so struck by the things, like I'm so attracted to signage and like these visual imprints of cities. I'm hand painted signs and your work exudes, you know, that like it just feels like you're walking through a neighborhood. Right. But it's, in, it's this, it, it really homes in on this idea of paying attention, you know, mm -hmm. and the messages that we get. What were the beginnings of connecting for you for this imagery and realizing that this is going to be part of, you know, your art, your, your language? It's just, uh, for me, it was like uh, very organic and it mm. was just investigating the materials and being in the studio working and um, kind of, you know, kind of uh, traversing the city, kind of mm. having these uh, serendipitous kind of yeah. interactions with the city and paying attention to surroundings, the land, mm -hmm. um, and just being open, being an observer. And, mm -hmm. you know, using, once I started building my vocabulary, I was thinking about discarded and discounted areas, mm -hmm. uh, materials in those spaces, mm -hmm. uh, what I can do to make something that isn't traditional in the sense of like how I was trained or how this country present something as being a successful kind of painting. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like, for me, trying to undo all that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just try to um, add to the conversation of painting. And, you know, I thought that in Los Angeles would be um, something I can kind of lean on yes. and kind of uh, pull from, because I've been here, you know, um, all my life. So it's more just kind of like looking around and paying attention and trying to get people to look with me and pay attention with me and kind of uh, mm. um, understand the kind of, uh, you know, kind of um, the, the, the inner, you know, kind of 
the tapestries I'm trying to weave and present. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting because we were talking a little bit just before about um, even though the city is big, this sprawl, you know, it takes a bit to move around. There is this beauty too in adjacencies in these communities that we live up against and brush up against and how they inspire or inform or kind of um, augment our vision, our narrative about LA. I'm really curious, and for me, you know, I grew up kind of all over the city. Mm -hmm. You know, I lived near USC when I was just born, then lived in the Crenshaw District, then moved for high school in Culver City, <laughs> then moved to Echo Park, left for a little bit, um, lived in Venice, um, now I'm in Pasadena as well. But in all of the communities I've lived in, you know, I was adjacent to, it was, it was almost these like little border cities where mm -hmm. there's so many different languages and different rituals. And I'm wondering how, for both of you, how that has, um, affected your work and has inspired your work? Sarah? Um, hmm. Do you feel like well, I don't you're know. up a brush up against other cultures and other? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, um, I think I also always kind of feel like a tourist here hmm. uh, in a way, you know, like, my studio is in Boyle Heights, and I've had that studio since 2008. Um, hmm. But I definitely don't feel like a part of the community there. Or really? Something. Okay. I definitely feel like, uh, I mean, it's weird because I'm, you know, kind of know everybody around there in a way and recognize each other and stuff, yeah. but we don't like interact very much. Uh, just sort of see the same faces. I don't know. Um, when you say tourist, I just want to, because I'm really curious about that. How does that feel? How does how does that manifest for you? Um, well, I, I, you know, honestly, I think it's like one of the things that, um, you know, kind of drives my work in a way. It's like sort of always seeing things uh, out of context. Mm, you know? mm, mm. Um, yeah, so I think I kind of look through... Uh, slightly different lens than That's maybe someone who grew up here. That's interesting. Um, yeah, it's always, there's always a little bit of like a uh, fascination, you know, when I'm yeah. walking around. Like, so does it still f feel fresh to you or do you feel <laughs> like you can't summon up in a sentence either, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it does in a lot of ways and it's also, uh, you know, I mean, I think like anything, you know, 2008 to now, I don't know how many yeah. years that is, but pretty long time. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there will be times when things seem really fresh, and most of the time, maybe not. Maybe you not, know? yeah. You know, it's kind of like, okay, this is what I do every day. Right. But, you know, I'm always looking. I'm, all, you know, and really in the last, like, mm, eight, maybe eight to ten years, the work has really sort of... Uh, you know, sort of taken a lot from my commute mm, mm -hmm. to, to the studio. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, now it's like kind of a thing, like I'm yeah. kind of hyper aware of that, whereas before it was maybe more a little like, you know, spontaneous. And now I'm kind of like, you know, in my mind, like yeah. thinking like, oh, what am I going to see today? Yeah, what am I going to see? Patrick, how about you? Um, Those adjacencies, the adjacent yeah, cultures. So it, it's like we were talking about earlier. It's it's for me, the experience growing up um, in and around San Gabriel Valley, Los Angeles, all all of it, all of it. You know, it was just you know these these pockets, Alhambra, El Monte. You mm -hmm. know, like Highland Park. All these places are very like some of them could be very insular. But like I was mentioning early on um, when we were we were talking, um, it was more just kind of that um, in, in, in the 90s, I was growing up and I had graffiti and I was doing a lot of it. And I was this, this weird kind of shy kid and graffiti kind of propped me up, told me to get out, get on the bus, go <laughs> meet up with friends that are different pockets of LA. And that's how I got to see the city. That's how I kind of yeah. broke through 
those areas of of meeting up with my friend that lives, you know, my go, go meet up with my cousin in Highland Park and do all these other things, go meet up with friends in Mid City or whatever, yeah. or in, um, you know, off of Melrose. Yeah. These are the things that kind of like uh, got me involved with different pockets and understanding how they operate because Los Angeles can seem very diverse from the outside mm -hmm. looking in and it could be, you know, it could just be one of those things where you're 21 years old and you've never left, yes. you know, outside of 10, 15 miles of your area. And I kind of encountered that all my life with friends and, you know, people that I come in contact with. And um, I guess, you know, early on, it was one of those game changers where I was just out there kind of uh, seeing the city for myself and seeing it from different vantage points mm -hmm. and experiencing, um, you know, different tribes, mm -hmm. different, you know, crews, different yeah. people. So, um, yeah, it's, it's and then understanding those kind of like in between kind of niche, like, uh, you know, yeah. pockets of LA that really are the glue that hold this place, you know, hold this place up, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting the, when you were talking about the tagging crews yesterday, and I was thinking <laughs> of the, um, I think a good, um, another example is the way music is too here. You know, where oh, yeah. when you listen to a radio, like back when, you know, we were all listening to the same radio stations, you know, we weren't yeah. streaming everything. And you, and then you'd hear about a, a club or a concert, yeah, you got into a certain style of music. Yeah. And so you had to figure out how to get there. And I always tell people, you know, it was really important for me to find a friend who had a car early. Because yeah. I didn't get a car. I, I, I got my license really late for LA. I got my license probably when I was 18. No, no, 18. And um, so I had to find an older friend, you know, and, and I bust, I took a bus, which people say nobody does that in LA, but of course, everybody does. You know, we walk, go sure. places. But that's what introduced me to LA, you know, it, it different in LA too, because it required that I learn to move across time and space to meet these new people and have this richness. I mean, did you spend much time growing up here doing that too? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just, you mean just like riding buses and hitting, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. After and that chasing was a, music or chasing whatever. What, what, it could be like a graffiti magazine, a publication yep. that, you know, we were talking about earlier, just having, you know, and, and seeing it, right? And then like hopefully buying it or whatever, materials even, you know, right. markers, spray paint, whatever, it was, um, very um, hands-on and we would have to go out there and get it or seek yeah. it and um, you know obtain it and there was many uh, you know kind of uh, um, journeys and you know expeditions that yeah. we went on and it, it's uh, definitely something that I think about now mm -hmm. I'm, well, 43 years old now and it's yeah. just something I kind of um, that's in the back of my mind often uh, when I when I think about Wanda, who um, I've learned from her brother, um, when she was trying to figure out the poetry scene here, and this would have been oh. back in the 50s and 60s into the 70s. Later, of course, by then she had established herself, but it was the same thing. She said, you know, this one scene didn't fit. You know, I'm going to go try another one. And that's how she ended up in Venice. You know, it was right. because she was looking around for places that, where she found community, where she mm -hmm. found connection, um, physical and spiritual, you know, that was important. Um, and, and as you said, you know, I do think that trying to permeate that is so hard. Like, I, I was mentioning yesterday, I didn't really start writing about LA or realizing that LA was a muse for me um, until I moved away. I moved to San Francisco very briefly and um, I had been working a bookstore job on the west side and I was just worn out with people facing work. <laughs> and, um, and it was, and I just thought I went on an adventure and I always, I loved San Francisco, I thought it was beautiful. I had read about, you know, the writing scene there. And as soon as I got there, um, when people would find out I was from LA, it was, wow you're really lucky you got out of there. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? Then I got very defensive, like, how dare you? <laughs> I love my city. And that's kind of seriously how it, I, and I started 
thinking about it and seeing it in a different way. Um, and with distance and time, I understood what some of these features that were so beautiful, the colors and the fauna against this like crazy industrial, like, um, you know, you could be in the middle of something that looked really beautiful and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, what is that burned out, you know, piece of I don't know what. Yeah. In fact, yesterday on the way here, I was um, driving around, there was a, a little house that must, um, that used to be part of this neighborhood that they call the Forgotten Edge between Chinatown and Elysian Park. And I, I think the house was from the early 1900s. And I was shocked that it was still standing wow. for so long. It's gone now. Wow. So I took a picture of the lot yesterday. I'll wow. share it with you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as you were saying, Sarah, um, I find myself now more and more pulled to looking in a way mm. that I didn't. Like once I got back, I started looking in a different, at, at what I lived around in a different way. Um, I'm going to start with you. Do you see LA as a muse, or do you see LA as, uh, I don't know, something you push against? <laughs> uh, well, probably, probably both, both yeah. you know? I mean, um, I have a certain reverence yeah. for it, I think. Uh, it's super interesting. Um, the history is super interesting. It's mm -hmm. sort of function is super interesting, you know? Um, it's not only a city where people live, but mm -hmm. that in and of itself is like a commodity. So it has like a life outside of itself that most places don't really have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and um, I'm also trying to raise a family here. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's challenging in a lot of ways. In, I what, think, way? Uh, in what way for you? Well, I, I think like, you know, it seems uh, at times untenable, um, mm. you know, like I think, you know, particular things like the homeless epidemic, yes. I think is particularly, um, there you go, uh, particularly yeah. difficult to sort of grapple with with young children. Yes. So, um, yeah. The kinds of conversations you have to have. Yeah, long yeah. story short, yeah, it's definitely yeah. a little bit of both. Um, yeah. You know, I think living here is great. And I think as a young person, it was, you know, really exciting, kind of exhilarating. And mm -hmm. I think as a, as a transplant, uh, you know, you sort of get into the novelty of it in a, <clears throat> in a way. And I think that kind of wears off, yeah. you know, becoming a parent, so... When you were at CalArts then, um, so you were in, were you living in Santa Clarita? I, I lived there for one year. So my first year, my first year actually, I lived in North Hollywood. Okay. As a, a I thought it would be a, a good balance to be in between LA and uh, Santa Clarita. <laughs> <laughs> the place I lived in was horrible. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, but what, you know, it was funny. Uh, but anyway, so I, yeah, I lived in North Hollywood and then I commuted both up and down. Mm. Um, sorry. Anyway, yeah. And then yeah. I and then immediately after I lived in Highland Park. Okay. Yeah. And did did you pick Highland Park because you knew people or? Did yeah, you there were kids that finished Cal Arts who had a room for rent, so okay. I just took that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I was thinking like, sometimes it's like we have to learn LA through the eyes of other people first. Definitely, you yeah, know? yeah. Well, yeah, and I mean, I think that's a big thing too, is especially in the art community, and may, maybe not as much now, I don't know, but, uh, you know, I think for artists, you know, there's so many good schools here, and mm -hmm. so I think most artists that are here came here to go to school, um, if, unless they grew up here. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so you really kind yeah. of uh, find your way through that, like, lens through that yeah. uh, subculture. Patrick, how about you? Is Muse antagonist? I mean, like LA? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Muse for sure, but I mean, you know, the, the reality of it is, it's just like being here for such a long time, or most yeah. well, my whole life, it's just the reality of just trying to own a home here, you know, in the yeah. place that you grew up in yeah. is very uh, tough. And you see like, family members moving away that don't yes. really want to because they can't, you know, afford 
Los Angeles. Yes. And, um, f you know, like family members, not a you know, they're not able to afford rent or, you know, a home, rent for a home. Right. So it's, it's, it's a struggle, right? You're yeah. painting, you're, you're, you're celebrating it, but also in your real personal life, you're struggling with a lot of the things that, mm -hmm. the byproducts of, you know, the uh, growth or, you know, the, the uh, you know, just the, uh, the change, yeah. right? Uh, uh, things are so expensive. Um, so yes. it's just, you know, it's, um, you know, like for, so it, it, it's, it's kind of a balance, you know, like in my studio, it's, you know, very kind of, I'm engaged with the uh, process of making work and I'm using Los Angeles as a muse, but, mm -hmm. you know, outside of the studio, I have my complaints, yeah. and, <laughs> you know, like things, in, in things are very long, real. Right? Yeah. Yeah, well, not, not too long, but just, you know, I'm thinking about a lot of people, like, yeah. you know, like we're, the experiences with the work is is like you you take those conversations that you had like that I had with my brother or like with a friend and yeah. you think about that stuff when you're working and not that it's informing every move it's just like you know it fuels you a little bit yeah and um, so I mean it, it's it's a back and forth but the balance is you know um, you know it's it's there but um, you know there's a there's definitely frustration you know in the personal life and. Not that I'm angry or anything, but it's just, you know, there's there's some things you think about, yeah. you know, being into 2024, and it's just like, wow, you know, buying a house out here is um, crazy. And you're right. It's in insane. When you were talking about, you know, family members um, or, you know, people not being able to pay their mortgage or rent, I went to this heartbreaking um, renters meeting because I was trying to write about you know, I've been hearing anecdotal stories mm -hmm. about, you know, you know, people having trouble, you know, paying their property taxes or getting ready to lose their family's home right. of many, many generations because they couldn't. And this idea that I, you know, this piece I wrote a few years ago, I started out the whole piece with this one sentence, whose dream brought you here? Because that's what I feel is sitting in people's hearts, you know, now yeah. when they're like, I, I can't hold on to this family's dream, this beautiful place, you know, this, you know, Eden, you know, this, this, you know, again, back to your imagery, um, I can't hold on to it. And it was very painful to sit in this meeting, you know, and listen to, yeah. and people were, the good thing was, people are getting resources and ways to like, you know, we don't have to move and this is what we can do and it doesn't have to go into foreclosure, this is what we'll do. But who, I think about how that dream can turn into a nightmare here, yeah, you know, absolutely. and it feels even more so sometimes. Yeah, I think, you know, America like no other place in the world maybe is like really, it's just really every man for himself, yeah. you know, so I think the safety net here is pretty, Yes. It's pretty minute. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was light. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, it's you, you have to discuss this. You have, I mean, and that's what I find in my work, both as a journalist and as an SAS, and then trying to do other work around living here. You have to address all that because it is part of that, you know, shadow and light, and you know, the noir and sunshine of what it is to be here. And that's what I think, the people who I think are invested in it, and I do wanna talk about this now for both of you, is like, we do have to cast lights on things. So in your work, what, what do you want to cast light on or um, dig out so we, it can be at the forefront and not at the edges because I always talk about how there's this main narrative we have about LA, what people think LA is, and LA is so much more. Mm. What do you think people need to know more, and what do you hope to do in your art? Um, with the landscape work that's here at the Broad, like a lot of it is celebrating aesthetics or just, mm -hmm. you know, materials that are discounted in Los Angeles. So, I don't know, like for me, I'm almost like a, an archivist, like just kind of yeah. putting things together, weaving tapestries, of the time that we're all living in and celebrating that in a way and creating this kind of art as artifact, frozen kind of mm. 
um, vessel, if you will, of uh, materials that we all know that are familiar to us, but they're kind of a fleeting material. They're, they're things, aesthetics that are leaving this city because of development, gentrification, things like yeah. that. Um, when that stuff happens, there's an aesthetic there that dictates to us what's valuable and things um, like, you know, that are kind of, you know, situated that you, you understand that that development is being expensive or that, that uh, high rise is expensive and yeah. the discounted or the, the, the neighborhoods around there or, you know, the things that people overlooked, I'm just trying to take and get people to kind of look again and, and yeah. uh, pay attention to um, that, um, that aesthetic because it is leaving, right? It is mm -hmm. kind of fleeting. So my, my, my hope is that I not like photos or photojournalism that um, I can give you that feeling of, of a space um, that was one, you know, that was once there, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, um, maybe just kind of, uh, you know, weaving a tapestry to represent the people that are here mm -hmm. in Los Angeles and those different pockets. Um, you know, so it's encapsulated in a painting or, um, you know, not, not that it will be, you know, trying to come up with something that isn't dated, yeah. that speaks to painting and art history, but also just that it, it does, it's not like a photo, yeah. it's a feeling of a place yeah. that was once there, yeah. Feeling, yes, feeling. You know, we were talking a little bit, and I'm gonna get to you too, because I want you to, I want you to speak to that, but that was the thing, and we, talked about it yesterday, there was a time where you would move across, and you still can do that, but there was such a distinct feeling to each neighborhood, mm. um, architecturally, or the way space was used, or what gardens looked like, or the colors people painted their houses, or all kinds of different things. And I feel now, especially in the last 10 years, more, there's a sort of flattening, you know, where you go all You're the way across town, that, and yeah. You know, it's like, oh, it's the same coffee house or this, the same, yeah. you know, everything sort of starts to look the same. And I'm still finding myself trying to pull myself toward that feeling, what you're talking yeah. about. Um, yeah. Um, Sarah, how about you? How about, like, what you want to make people look twice at, look harder at? Uh, I think, um, I think, you know, like, L.A. is a good it was a good example of a city that has, you know, um, obviously, you know, tremendous amount of wealth and prosperity, but, uh, you know, I think the flip side of that, you know, or sort of the, the, the push and pull between, I think, is what is kind of interesting. Yes, um, yes. You know, and I think also, like, <coughs> you know, the sort of, n shifting nature of how we sort of see things like you know I think LA is is really particularly interesting because it's really at the beginning of that I mean Hollywood and now social media and things yes. like this so I think like you know taking all of that into account is what I'm sort of uh, trying to mm. you know make pictures of yes we were talking I mean, you're a visual artist, but we were also talking about different ways in which um, your other senses are pricked by the city. What are other things um, that feed you? Um, other, um, you know, sound or textures. Mm. I'm just curious about how that might inspire you here. Sounds or texture. I have a little anec okay. anecdote, yeah. but you know, this is total um, <laughs> transplant sort of anecdote. But what I remember, I, after I lived in Highland Park, I moved to Boyle Heights. Uh, well, like kind of city terrace, but it was, it was right. You, you could look out my window and see the 10. Yes. And I remember talking to my mom on the phone, sitting by the window. And she was like, oh, I think I can hear the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, uh, nope. nope. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> and I always remember there's that, I think it's in yeah. this movie, maybe it's in Rumblefish. Uh, and, you know, they're asking this kid's older brother what the ocean's like. 
And uh, he's like, I don't know, I never saw it. And they're mm. like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, L.A. got in the way. Mm. You know, it's kind of, mm. everybody thinks yeah. L.A. is like yeah. right on the ocean. Yes, uh, yes. You know, nobody really realizes it's like just a few communities. Just a few yeah. communities, and you're in fear now. You <laughs> yeah, know, because, exactly. Yeah. How about you, Patrick? Um, I don't know. I mean, um, I know I'm a big scent person, you know. Like yeah. It's, it's oh, in, uh, oh, here's ooh, another okay. one. It's, it's <laughs> it, just so. not too far from my street, uh, from my studio is uh, the Farmer John oh. Uh, oh. Slaughterhouse, which oh, is in yes. which is in um, Vernon. Was it in Christine or what? What's the movie? It's in one of those old movies. Where, oh, that's right. Where, the so, where they get the blood yeah, from. Right. Yeah, yeah, anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I smell that I totally slaughterhouse that. all the mm -hmm. time, and sometimes it's just, like, nauseating. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that nice? <laughs> it's pretty crazy. It's true. Yeah, I used to smell that. Uh, I, I, it, I think it's actually not... Well, you're in Farmer's Huntington Park, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm in yeah. Huntington Park, but when I was living in Montebello, I could smell it from yeah, there. Yeah, you could smell all the way travel. from there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of those things that kind of indicated, like, Oh yes, south. You know what I mean? Like it, it was, it was around. But I think that um, I always think that it was Farmer John, but it's actually Hoffy, the oh. uh, the, the the hot oh. dog place. Oh. Yeah, which okay. is kind of it's you know at least Farmer John is like this huge. It, it which is now getting destroyed. Right, Farmer that's John. Right. Oh really? Farmer John. Yeah, yeah, it's all in in, in rubble. Yeah. But. Um, I always used to think that it was the Farmer John's, oh, but, it's but not? it was like the half. It's like a couple, like it's a block down. <laughs> I know where you're talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I believe it is. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I know that um, when I was slaughterhouses of Los Angeles. Yeah, the slaughter <laughs> hey, You know, when um, when I was learning, when I was taking driver's training, um, my driver training teacher, who was also my math teacher, we would, go <laughs> which meant it was very complicated because I was not a good math student. But he was a really kind person. Um, <laughs> and um, we would, I had a very early driver's training class, so we were up at like 7 in the morning, you know, going out. Yeah. And we would go, this is when I was in Culver City, um, and we would go and um, out to El Segundo. And the way I would know, it would start, the, the air would change. Oh, uh, yeah. And, um, and he would say, oh, we're approaching El Stinko. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> But I think about these names um, and what we need to, and how we, and I have so many more questions, but I want to segue into audience questions, but I want to just end that by saying that I have so much more to talk to you about, about <laughs> inspiration and, um, and why we call this home and um, the changes we've watched um, in the time we've been here. You know, even you, I know you've been here long enough to see a lot of major change. So let's put a pin in that mm -hmm. to be continued. But I want to open up for questions um, from the audience. Yes? Uh, I don't, yeah, just yell. <laughs> and I'll repeat it. I'm sorry, how inhabitants? Yeah, the inhabitants. Okay, so the question is, is how the inhabitants of Los Angeles will come into play in your work? Um, for me, like, I, I, I think about, like, uh, the installations that I, I was doing early on, like, in the, you know, 2011, 2012, 13. All the, like, the neons being from, like, you know, spaces in Los Angeles, the inspiration for them. So, uh, you know, uh, storefront signage, taking mm -hmm. that, re remixing it and replacing. So I think it's more kind of an engaging, right? Like there's people that look at that in windows, storefront windows, walk by it, drive by it. So um, in the future, I think that I'm gonna do, um, I'm thinking about doing more installations mm -hmm. in Los Angeles and having them interact with people. Um, so, you know, not that uh, the museum is anything 
I'm trying to stay away from, but like also just like really putting the work directly in front of uh, someone that wouldn't come to the museum, someone that yeah. wouldn't normally um, um, kind of uh, even be thinking about art and, and be like kind of like, a, you know, like kind of, uh, what is it, uh, stopped by it when they're just kind of going about their business, their day. Um, so I, just kind of more interactions like that for me, kind of getting the people in, um, in and around where I live kind of involved with mm -hmm. some of the work and also just like uh, trying to figure out bridges and, you know, uh, um, getting the work in people's hands, mm -hmm. uh, you know, additions and things like that, but just in, an, in a u unique way that kind of can speak to the land and the, to, to the people of the city. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yeah. I don't really have a, a plan. <laughs> <laughs> cold. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Serendipity, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think, yeah, I think there's a kind of through the way I paint. There's a kind of populism built into this kind of realism. I think people can engage with my work pretty readily. Um, you know, I don't have like a specific outline for engaging yeah. people more head-on or something. Right. Yes? So just to follow up on that last question, it's a, it's a simple question, but it's a great question. What is um, most significant to you? Your yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. But what is most significant to you about who you are surrounding yourself with? Mm. What is the most significant thing about seeing this work now in the museum? Yeah, okay. Um, for me, it's just, it teleports me back to when I was nine years old, eight mm. years old, you know, taking, was it field trips to museums and interacting with the work. And I understood when I was very young why people were there to see the work. And it was just about an exchange, like people trying to be teleported to wherever those paintings are from and the time that they were from. Um, and just understanding that the, there was people screaming into the void and making work and just, you know, just kind of just yeah. just making stuff and, and saying that they were there um, and people feeling and understanding that by just looking at the work. And I'm glad that I can kind of maybe do that same thing and, and you know, like get people in, um, from the city or just wherever it ends up to um, see it maybe that way or whatever other way they want to view the work at like, but it's, it's maybe that that's my experience or that's mm -hmm. what I think about first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, you kind of said it perfectly, so <laughs> not, not that much to add. <laughs> I feel the same. <laughs> yes. Uh, what are your thoughts on um, memorials? Mm. Mm. How, how do you memorialize a place, both uh, positively or negatively? Mm. Thoughts on memorials yeah. and how LA is hmm. memorialized, positively or negatively. It's interesting. Oh. Huh. Yeah, interesting. I've never thought specifically about memorials, uh, um, but I mean, you can sort of think of like the history of art in a way as a, a memorializing project in some ways. Um, so it's interesting to think about. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like uh, memorializing maybe people and spaces. I think the. F if we're doing it in a tasteful way, manner, like uh, cementing um, spaces and people in the paint or like where whatever we decide to paint or um, yeah. bring, bring in, into height, I, you know, just kind of by just doing that or painting a space. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, yeah. I was gonna say, you know, it's kind of interesting because, well, I wouldn't think of it as a memorial because a memorial is when someone is dead or something is dead, you know, it's like mm -hmm. happens as a reaction to something. So, you know, I think this, 
city is, or whatever, this country, whatever, is very much alive. Yeah. So it's hard to think about it in terms of that, I think. Mm. Um, but maybe, you know, time is fleeting, things are fleeting, yeah. things are changing. So yeah. in that way, a record, you know, maybe. Um, yeah. Or you're talking about being an archivist or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just, um, yeah. So, I mean, if, if it is like a physical memorial, like a, like, I don't know, maybe just like a, I'm thinking like a mural on a LA surface or something, right? Mm -hmm. Doing it in your own way, um, cementing that person in your own way into paint mm -hmm. is, um, I don't know, a way to, I don't know, just kind of look at the city, but at the same time, maybe um, think about memorials or think about memorializing someone, right. maybe here in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. uh, someone that was from here, or stuff like that. I mean, I think about that a lot, too, as we do mention gentrification and as neighborhoods mm -hmm. change over. So some of these murals that have been up, like, you know, since the 70s, 60s and 70s, yeah. when the neighborhoods change and they get painted over, there's something really heart-wrenching about that because I always feel like, wouldn't it be wonderful if there was some way to save part of that so that people know whose footsteps they're walking in and who mm. they're living around? And I know we all want to be able to represent who our heroes are and what our important moments are, but there is something I find so heartbreaking about when you know these murals have to go away. You know, you know those that kind of memorialization. Yeah. yeah. So because so it's a neighborhood sanctioned, you know, mural or memorial like that yeah. uh, the neighborhood felt uh, that person was important enough to paint. That's and right. So that's why I think about those spaces yeah. and like them being indicators of. Uh, I don't know, trauma, hurt, uh, yeah. things like that. Uh, yeah. Question. Question. So like you just said, you were speaking about um, sentimentality and mm. nostalgia. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm curious about your feelings on that for a certain group I identify with the book of yours or the Vincent Lawrence. Uh, I, I, it enters my mind all the time. And I use it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, 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 I run with it. and. Um, especially spaces and places that aren't around anymore and, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, memory, right? Like thinking about what we think that we know about that space or what it looked like. And mm -hmm. even if it's like a little, you know, um, off or not accurate, that it, it's a version of it. Mm -hmm. um, we could look at photos too and they could bring us there, but what if there aren't photos? And, 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 you know, using my family's archive of photos, I mm -hmm. probably kind of... I share that through um, some of the paintings that I make. So um, it's it's all kind of just, uh, it's it's always kind of uh, around, for sure. Yeah. I think <clears throat> uh, nostalgia is almost like a medium in its own right for mm. me. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Not so much personal or sentimentality, yeah. um, but I definitely love cartoon characters and <laughs> iconography, graphics, yeah. Um, yeah, mastheads, logos, things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, things are kind of more wide, re you know, sort of more universal than specific to myself. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't say there's a lot of sentimentality built into it, but, mm -hmm. you know, some p th things that easily trigger people. I was just going to say trigger, yeah. <laughs> and it's like when you were talking about fonts yesterday, too, yeah. I was like, yeah, there's Even certain we, fonts. We were talking about zip tone, too, right? Like That's comic book right. yeah. zip tone yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, all sure that stuff is stuff a lot lately. teleports, yeah. yeah. Do we have time for one more question? Question? Yeah. Yes. Your connections to Mexico and LA. Can you um, talk about that. For me, um, my my uh, my father's ancestors. You know, like that's where my father's from, and um, it's definitely something that I I try to represent in the the work that I make. Um, but also, just kind of like uh, we were talking about this earlier with with him being here and my grandfather being here for a while. They they were kind of uh, assimilating, right? And 
there's a lot of information that has kind of been lost in the shuffle. And a, a lot of the paintings kind of deal with that, um, creating like that third space or that, um, um, you know, that um, building, building a space for, you know, my understanding of it. And, and also using imagery and stories from, from my family and mm -hmm. imagery from Los Angeles to kind of compose that. Mm -hmm. Weave my own tapestries, almost like my own um, bio, um, like a history, mm -hmm. if you will, um, because of what has been lost or what has been covered up or what has been, um, you know, been redacted. So okay. a lot of that um, is used in, in, in um, the actual kind of um, the visual format that you might be recognizing or kind of you see in Los Angeles, but it's, it's, it's me kind of playing with um, filling in the blank almost for myself and, and representing, at the same time, trying to represent uh, the city I occupy space in. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really have any connection to Mexico. My family's not from there, and um, I've only been there twice, mm -hmm. but it's nice. <laughs> I, I like it. Any last questions? Yes? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, the question about I don't, the, I don't, the high rise. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if I. I think it's fantastic. But I do too. <laughs> it's it's um you know it it brings up ideas even it. yeah even if so you know like you know graffiti writers weren't thinking about it it brought attention to the houseless you know. Uh, you know, everyone that's houseless here, it's, it's ridiculous that these high rises are up and they're empty and they're, mm -hmm. yeah, they, they couldn't finish it because of the money, but a couple blocks down, there's so many people yeah. that are suffering. They don't, they don't have houses or Absolutely. places to live in. So it, it highlighted that for me, like it's kind yeah. of like it was um, goofy kind of, uh, you know, I don't know. It's, I, th I don't know if memorialized uh, or just kind of uh, left alone. Yeah, I mean, in a way, but maybe make it uh, useful for, you know, some of the Los Angeles inhabitants yes. and the, the citizens here. But, um, but um, yeah, I just think, uh, I, th I just thought it was fantastic that they did that because they, that's what they do, but that they yeah. also, um, it's like a byproduct of just, you know, um, all that attention kind of, got flashed on it, but it also spoke to LA's, um, you know, housing crisis. That's right, and it really brought it into, um, into the media spotlight too. I knew people were f flying out here, activists. Yeah. Not just not just the taggers, not the, just the writers. And then the police but started yeah. showing up. Started, They're like, oh, exactly. we better look like yeah. we're working, and yeah. Um, yeah. they started pulling up, and you're just so it, it was a frenzy, right? Yeah. Um, but it was interesting to see yeah. kind of all that stuff kind of happen. You have any thoughts on that? Oh, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought, you know, it's, it's crazy. It's great. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's funny. Yeah, it, it, it's like the biggest spectacle in a way. It's, yeah. it's perfect. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Really. Uh, I hadn't seen anything on that scale since the river, you know, when yeah, you know, the river, I was thinking right. about back. Yeah. This is, is way more, way more. Is way more uh, transgressive, yeah. you know. Yeah. It, it really is like a, and it really has a symbolic energy mm -hmm. that's, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you both. This was wonderful, and I really meant it when I'm to be continued. Yeah, yeah. yeah I feel like sure. we have some work to do. Thank you all again for coming. <laughs> um,